Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei in Beijing. As the clock runs out on the Trump administration, China-U.S. ties hit another hot-button issue, Taiwan. Secretary of State from the U.S. Mike Pompeo said he was lifting restrictions on official diplomatic contacts with Taiwan. Previously, any U.S. administration would be expected to follow the contact guidelines regarding relations with Taiwan. Meanwhile, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Kelly Kraft, will visit the region from Wednesday to Friday. Beijing reiterated its opposition to any form of official exchange between the U.S. and Taiwan, asking the U.S. to stick to the One China policy. While the Trump administration ramped up backing for Taiwan over the years with more arms sales and even visits by officials, what can we expect from the incoming Biden administration toward the issue of Taiwan? Let's loop in our panelists. For more on the Taiwan latest situation, joining us uh, in Taipei, Joanna Lei, former legislator. In Beijing, Teng Jianqun, director of the Center for Arms Control and International Security Studies with China Institute of International Studies. Last but not least, in Los Angeles, Jonathan Polak, non-resident senior fellow in the Center for East Asia Policy Studies and John Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution. Gentlemen and lady, welcome to the program. Ms. Lei, let me start by asking, what's your response to all the latest the series of uh, uh, rhetorics and actions uh, from Washington toward Taipei? Well, certainly on the surface, these are very positive and friendly gestures. However, this is at the bottom of the, ele- the ninth innings. It's a little bit too little too late, given that the president may not have time to fully execute his new support and new commitments to enhance Taiwan and U.S. relationship. And it is also a reason for caution because people are concerned about these actions tipping the balance across Taiwan Strait. And if that were the case, that may not be the best for Taiwan as well. So there are a lot of words of caution, but Mm. amid some welcoming voices. So, Mr. Polak... Given what's happening, what is happening with Washington politics, how do you see the nature of the latest rhetorics and actions coming from the current administration, who has less than 10 days to go? Um, This is the culmination of a long-term effort, uh, in particular by Secretary of State Pompeo, uh, to create as much uh, damage and uncertainty and change in the U.S.-China relationship uh, as possible. It's been in a number of dimensions, um, but these latest actions uh, represent a culmination of that process because uh, Mr. Pompeo is running out of time. What he hopes to do, uh, in, and again, I'm not defending it, I'm just simply saying what he hopes to do, is to make the relationship as unsettled as possible Uh, as the Biden administration takes power. Mm -hmm. Uh, He also Mm -hmm. thinks it will benefit his own political ambitions uh, if he were to run for president uh, in another four years or four years from now. Even though we have heard already from the other two speakers that it seems that uh, that decision being made and the latest rhetorics and actions all have their political purposes and there are cautious receptions uh, in Taiwan also about them. Mr. Tung, this is a test for China? More and more provocative actions or words from uh, the current U.S. administration will enhance the determination uh, for the Chinese government or for our military uh, to use force against the tendency of separation in this area. I mean, both in Taiwan and also the support from the United States in this regard. Ms. Lei, now the UN ambassador of the United States is to visit Taiwan. Uh, We do not know what kind of messages uh, she would be there to deliver. Um, But one thing is for sure, it is up to uh, Taiwan right now to decide what is the level of reception, what messages to be delivered then, and also 
how to control the damage uh, once it's done. Ms. Lei, what's your assessment of some of the possibilities from Taiwan? Um, it is also important to know that she will be the outgoing ambassador to the United Nations. That's right. Therefore, when she comes this way, um, I believe that the government is ready to host her as a goodwill ambassador. There might be hidden messages by either President Trump or Pompeo, and some even speculated that there could be very bold moves in terms of moving the um, official relationship further. However, I believe that Tsai Ing-wen will also wage this very carefully. It is customary that um, a person of her stature, when they visit Taiwan, like in the last time someone paid us a visit to Ma ying -jiu, Ma ying -jiu hosted the last visitor, and Tsai Ing-wen will definitely host Kelly. However, we do believe that there can be room for us to discuss the people-to-people -people exchanges, goodwill gestures, and then promote humanities, uh, climate change, and all sorts of issues that Tsai Ing-wen touted for Taiwan to be U.S. value partners. However, if they do move further into challenging the current status of the One China policy, I believe even with the current DPP government, they will be very careful in following or following the lead by President Trump and Pompeo. Mm. Mr. Tung, now it's quite clear that um, the status quo of uh, the relations across the Taiwan Strait cannot be changed. However, and China is very determined about that. However, there might be many steps taken by this administration in the U.S. and also Taiwan authorities to push Taiwan more into international organizations, uh, giving Taiwan uh, more status than what China believes uh, uh, should have as part of its own territory. So, Mr. Tung, how do you see the possibility of this layer? Yeah, you're right. I think the coming president, I mean, Joe Biden, will attach great importance to the so-called international space for Taiwan because, uh, you know, the Democratic Party or the uh, Democratic uh, leaders will give some, you know, uh, importance to the uh, uh, space uh, to, uh, to uh, of Taiwan to, to international organizations and to some other you know mechanism in the world. I think this is uh, the tradition for uh, Democrat Party and Joe Biden will will you know, use this uh, uh, philosophy to deal with the uh, so-called challenge from China as. Uh, a strategic competitor, and it's compared with uh, the current president, uh, Donald Trump. He would like to go directly, but Joe Biden will go in to, uh, in an indirect way, that is to mobilize support from the uh, airlines, including the support from Japan, from Australia, and from other uh, countries uh, to deal with the so-called challenge from the Chinese side. So I think uh, in the coming years, China might uh, uh, face new, you know, uh, challenges uh, in this regard. A Biden administration official has been talking about during the transition uh, on the relation with Taiwan. The Biden administration will continue to support court a peaceful resolution of cross strait issues consistent with the wishes and best interests of the people of Taiwan. End of quote. Does the Biden administration, do you think, would desire a card like Taiwan to be played with China? Uh, it, it seems to me that what Biden hopes to be able to achieve with China uh, is he does not want to see uh, this continuing uh, decline, severe deterioration in the relationship. The stakes are too high. Uh, and to that extent, how he treats the announced changes that Pompeo uh, has just announced, uh, how he deals with them will be an important indication of the, the kind of dialogue that he hopes, I believe, to start with Beijing. I don't think that, for one, that Biden is looking to cause real trouble, real turbulence. Quite the contrary. 
Uh, he really is someone with many of the uh, people that he has appointed who are very familiar with these issues to try to steady the ship, we might say, mm -hmm. uh, rather than rock the boat. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that sense, I think there's an opportunity, but very frankly, it has to be something that's done in conjunction with the government in Beijing. Mm. Uh, I think all, both sides recognize that this is a relationship that has undergone enormous stress over the last four years. It's a very changed relationship. Uh, I don't think that either side somehow thinks that everything can be magically restored to right. what it was before. The reason why the outgoing administration is trying to play this card of Taiwan for the last week when it's in office, it's because, for the one thing, want to set probably a difficult situation for uh, the Biden administration, but on the other hand, also try to make a, its own legacy to a certain extent. And as a result of that, they know China will react. China will have to react for provocative mm -hmm. actions and rhetorics. To what extent, mm -hmm. we'll have to see. But after China reacts, there would be certainly the escalation of tensions across the Taiwan Straits. Some could be manageable, some might mm -hmm. not necessarily for the long term. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Polak, now, how will the incoming administration be able to deal with a escalated, intense situation across the Taiwan Straits? Do you think they are prepared for this? If not, how are they going to de-escalate the situation uh, if things are getting ever more intense as a result of the latest visit? Now, in this respect, uh, even as Pompeo has tried to lay out his legacy, uh, it may not be that, uh, that anyone in the Biden administration feels obligated to uphold it. Uh, we don't know exactly how they will react, but the very fact that something has been laid down uh, and it was not, so far as I know, mm -hmm. the subject of careful planning and consideration within the bureaucracy was even criticized uh, at other levels in the State Department, uh, suggests to me that there is room here to distance uh, the incoming administration uh, from what uh, Pompeo may have thought he could, he could force them to do. Uh, th in other words, the incoming administration will be in a position to decide in what areas and in what ways does it adjust or not adjust uh, policies towards Taiwan. Mm. They are not obligated in that sense to follow exactly what Pompeo did, which has some internal contradictions in it in any I event. See. So that's why I believe uh, that um, the Chinese side has to weigh very, very carefully whether it comes in too strongly at first or whether it sees, not only with respect to Taiwan policy, but in other areas as well, that the U.S. and China can establish um, uh, or reestablish uh, a, a more maturing relationship where yeah. you, rather yeah. than heightened tensions, you're looking for ways to manage them and avoid the potential risks that they might imply. I think there's a realism that will be evident in their words and at least as important or more important in their actions. The Chinese and U.S. militaries were in close contact despite the other sides of the relations between the two sides were deteriorating to quite a low level over the past few years. They were in an in discussion for crisis management. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't heard much about the result though, but certainly the issue of Taiwan will be one that is likely to require a lot of uh, uh, crisis management uh, skills from the, both the militaries and to the, also the political leaders as well. So, Mr. Tang, uh, to what extent do you think both sides are ready? To what extent do you think the structure is there to deal with, uh, you know, not only rhetorical issues, but also a real crisis if it really became one. 
Yeah, I think in recent, uh, at least in recent one year, we have witnessed the, the preparation of the PRA. Uh, the PRA, you know, waged several large scale you know, exercise uh, related to the situation in Taiwan. And uh, on the other side, I'm sure when uh, President Biden uh, comes into the office of the White House, I, I'm sure uh, the security dialogue will be resumed between the two countries, in, including the military to military exchanges. But in uh, Trump's administration, I think at least in recent uh, three years, there were no, you know, any context between the two sides or exchanges between the two sides in uh, talking about the crisis management. So we, why we, uh, you know, we are a little bit relaxed at this moment. I, I, I think uh, we are we are facing such an opportunity that the dialogue of the exchanges between the two sides, especially the two militaries, will mm. be on the traditional track that we could have some dialogue at this moment. All right. Before we go, Ms. Lei, uh, final question for you as well. Uh, how do you see the preparedness that the mainland has been doing toward the question of Taiwan, uh, peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, uh, given the geopolitics that we are seeing today, what do you consider as the best way out from your perspective? Well, the mainland China has made its intention of aerial denial clear to both Taiwan and to the United States through recent military exercises. So it is very clear that if there is any tipping of the balance across Taiwan Strait, mainland China is fully prepared to take on the challenges head on. Therefore, it is important for us to expect all the leaders to exercise restraint. And it is an opportunity to reset the relationship across Taiwan Strait as well as with the United States. Like Mr. Pollack said, um, President Biden has used a lot of old hands who are seasoned players, known quantity, who understands how to deal with delicate issues across the Taiwan Strait. So we're hoping for an era to re reset so that the United States and PRC went back, would go back to a more restrained relationship and not open provocation or hostility, as well as um, um, creating tension between Taiwan and PRC. We certainly hope that with the reset, there will be a new equilibrium brought back by new leaders in the United States so that we can all enjoy a relative peace and stability. On that note, I would like to thank the three of you joining us. Uh, thank you so much, Joanna Lei, Tung Jianxun, and Johnson Pollack. Really appreciate it. There's only one China in the world, and Taiwan is an inalienable part of China's territory. While it's inevitable for the greater rejuvenation of the Chinese people, the issue of Taiwan has always been the bottom line for ties with the United States. With increasingly complex geopolitics in the Asia-Pacific region, how to deal with uncertainties of the Taiwan issue in the new year? For more answers, earlier I had a chance to talk to Yang Mingjie, the director of the Institute for Taiwan Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Let's listen in. Professor Yang, welcome to CGTN. A lot of the experts I've been talking to have been reflecting about how uh, turbulent a year it has been, but many suggest the coming year might not be better. Professor Yang, from your perspective, doing research on cross-strait relations and the Taiwan issue, what is your assessment? For me, I think there are two paths for Taiwan issues. One may be negative, that is, as you mentioned about the turbulence and uh, there are a lot of troubles, and uh, we don't hope uh, there will be another good year for us across Taiwan streets because Taiwan wants to join with the United States on the framework of Indo-Pacific strategy and want to enhance the uh, tensions across Taiwan streets. But on the other side, I think it's not op uh, offset, but I think it's a normal side. That means we have established a stability across Taiwan streets not only on the economic communication, but also on the people-to-people -people communication and the social communication. That is much more stable than the last decades. Mm -hmm. So that's why even during the Trump administration, 
even there are some uh, challenge for the cross street issues, but the basement for the Taiwan streets never really changed. Let's, let's talk about the nearest term, the change of administration inside the United States. Earlier we see the Trump administration played with the Taiwan card a lot. Uh, now, during this transition between two administrations, do you see much danger? Mm, some danger, but not so dangerous. Danger is that I don't think the next president of the United States don't want to give up the Taiwan cars, but I'm not so, how to say, uh, uh, worried about the dangers is that because according to some uh, statement or some maybe arguments from uh, the national security team of uh, the new president, they want to focus the Taiwan's two issues on the so-called ambiguous policy. They don't want to touch the red line or the bottom line. Mm -hmm. They want to make some constraint about the policy. That maybe gives some rooms for mainland China and the United States to deal with that issues. So you think it could be better, quote unquote? Not so better, but I think maybe some kind of stable and uh, not so challenging. Mm. However, uh, it is hard to avoid incidents and accidents. So. How much do you think China is prepared? Would there be much misunderstanding uh, during the most sensitive period of time? For me, I think also there is no uh, the so-called uh, official or, the, or formal channels between mainland China and the United States on Taiwan issues so far. But we have some dialogue and communications channels. Even so, there are some potential and risk or crisis in the future or accident. But I think the two sides want to find a crisis management channel. What is that channel? And what is some of the mechanism you just mentioned? For example, even there is a tension, as, in, as I said, is increasing at the end, by the end of the present Trump administration. But the two military units have some special channels. They exchange that information. They want to make some mutual visit. But that's the last resort, actually, the military ties. Yes. They want to, according to some the code of conduct, how to avoid the, in the air or in the sea, the accident crash of the Navy or the Air Force. Among the Biden administration, some of the key posts, actually many of the figures you are familiar with. Uh, in other words, you even had dialogues and discussions, conversations with them when they were serving in other capacities during the earlier administrations. So, Professor Yang, what is your judgment of their perspective of the Taiwan issue? Do you see the circumstances change that attitudes and basic assessment from the other side might also evolve in a dramatic way? Maybe some changes that uh, the new administration, also some people come from the, so the so-called old administration of uh, Democratic Party, but they have some new ideas. They want to make the competition and the cooperation with China. So what the meaning of the competition means for Taiwan issues? Mm -hmm. It's not only mean that they want to bargain with China on Taiwan issues, but I think they want to keep a new balance across Taiwan's trees, not only on military issues, but also maybe some, on some social and economic level. Hmm. That's a challenge for us. Interesting. What do you mean? How are you going to face up to that challenge, in other words? For example, maybe they want to, in, how to say, invite Taiwan in the so-called non-China supply chain, something like that. Maybe they want to invite Taiwan to take part in the some forum and some, not alliance, but a forum or some communications platform of values. Mm. And what is China going to do? Are we going to play the victims? I think that we have sent a very clear signals to the United States and also to Taiwan that we want to keep the stability across Taiwan streets. If they want to make some new challenge, we will make some new response for that. That is not only by meter means, but also by law enforcement, economic issues, and also some others.